hello my respected colleagues juniors as well as senior who are preparing for various exams in critical care medicine need super specialty or need hope you are safe and sound today i have come up to discuss few mcqs in gi critical care medicine a 70 year old man with a history of hypertension and diabetes presents to emergency room with frank blood in his stool and extreme weakness since past 2 days he began to feel light headed and dizzy at home and that is the reason he came to emergency department vital signs said emergency department admission were the blood pressure of 80 over 40 mm of mercury heart rate of 130 beats per minute respiratory rate of 25 oxygen saturation of 99% and temperature of 96 degree fahrenheit significant laboratory investigations for hemoglobin 6.4 g per deciliter total leukocyte count 8400 platelet 152 pco 226 urea 36 resuscitation was complete completed in the emergency department and a blood transfusion was commenced bp rose to 90 over 60 mm of mercury and heart rate to 100 per minute after 4 hours of resuscitation what is the most appropriate next step in the management nasogastric tube placement pantoprazole 8 mg iv bolus followed by pantoprazole drip at 8 mg per hour pantoprazole 40 mg iv bd colonoscopy or endoscopy upper gi endoscopy so what should be the the option over here see this is a case of lower gi bleeding so this is hematochezia with hemodynamic instability therefore there is a strong suspicion for a brisk upper gi bleeding which may occur in up to 15% of patients presenting with hematochezia there is a strong evidence supporting this statement there was a rct published in american journal of gastroenterology in 2010 which enrolled 85 patients with serious hematochezia and hemodynamic instability in that trial patients had upper endoscopy within 6 hours of presentation 15% patient had an upper source of the bleeding this paper concluded that the patients with clinically serious hematochezia should have upper endoscopy initially to rule out an upper gi source use of urgent colonoscopy in a population hospitalized with the serious lower gi bleeding shows no evidence of improving clinical outcomes the initial management should focus on stabilizing the vitals okay like in this case with the iv fluids and blood products following which intravenous proton pump inhibitors should be started typically a ppi or proton pump inhibitor is given as a high dose bolus followed by a continuous infusion so choice b is correct intermittent dosing with an iv ppi may be utilized for the post endoscopic medical therapy but it is not suitable for pre endoscopic medical therapy so remember this fact which is very important now let's move on to the question number 2 a patient admitted to the emergency department for the hematemesis underwent upper gi endoscopy which demonstrated a clean based ulcer with a non bleeding visible vessel in the duodenal sweep injection of epinephrine and bipolar cautery was performed with excellent hemostasis what is the most appropriate immediate post endoscopic management and disposition for this patient discharge home the following day on a daily dose of per oral ppi keep in icu and repeat endoscopy in 24 hours to ensure continued hemostasis or transfer to floor and start patient on per oral ppi or transfer to floor and continue iv ppi so what should be 
the correct option the option is that transfer to the floor and start ibppi see you can solve this question if you are well aware about the principles of post endoscopic medical management which is determined by endoscopic findings such as stigma of recent hemorrhage such as red veil sign and the need for the endoscopic therapy if patient has received the endoscopic therapy then iv ppi should be continued for at least 72 hours that is 3 days 2021 american college of gastroenterology guidelines recommend high dose proton pump inhibitor therapy continuously or intermittently for 3 days followed by twice daily oral therapy for first two weeks of endoscopy this guideline is based on 2014 meta analysis which demonstrated that intermittent dosing of ppi may lead to equivalent primary outcome that is the risk of re bleeding within 7 days so whether you start a intermittent dose of ppi or a continuous ppi after endoscopy doesn't matter much if a patient has a low risk of stigmata that is a flat pigmented spot or clean based ulcer he or she may be transitioned to a standard dose oral ppi and discharged after assuring that she is or he is hemodynamically stable and had a stable hemoglobin the hemoglobin is not dropping now regarding the routine second look endoscopy not recommended according to the latest guidelines routine second look endoscopy is not recommended in the absence of evidence of ongoing bleeding now let's move on to the question number 3 A 40-year-old patient chronic alcoholic liver disease presents to emergency department with hematemesis and undergoes endoscopy and is found to have three large esophageal varices with red veil signs. Endoscopic ligation bands are placed with good effect and hemostasis. The patient is extubated and does well with no further rebleeding. Now, what is the recommended approach to prophylaxis against further bleeding in this patient a no prophylaxis recommended as this is the patient's first episode of bleeding b begin nadolol 20 mg once daily c begin nadolol 20 mg once daily and repeat variceal banding in 2 to 4 weeks or d place transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt or tips so This is the question regarding the need of secondary prophylaxis for the prevention of recurrent variceal bleeding. So recurrent variceal bleeding is a problem because the rate is quite high up to 60% after a first episode of variceal bleeding. So secondary prophylaxis is must. So the best option in the cirrhotic patient is the combination of pharmacological therapy with beta blockers. and endoscopic band ligation guidelines recommend starting beta blockers 6 days after endoscopy to prevent masking hemodynamic signs of free bleeding non selective beta blockers exert their effect on portal pressures by reducing the splanchnic blood flow in two ways first they reduce the cardiac output and second they block the beta 2 receptor in the splanchnic arterial bed leading to unopposed alpha adrenergic mediated vasoconstriction and that's how they prevent the re bleeding now regarding the agent either nadolol or propanolol or cavidolol may be used for the prophylaxis endoscopic surveillance remains warranted for screening for variceal recurrence and re bleeding and a ligation should be repeated every 2 uh, to 4 weeks until varices are completely eradicated but remember the fact that a beta blocker alone is insufficient at this point of time tips or transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt is not warranted because it is a rescue treatment and is considered as a first choice in a patient who is bleeding on the beta blocker or who has the contraindication to start Uh, the beta blocker or who has the refractory ascites or the patient who has a fundal varices okay only in such patient you should 
do a tips otherwise tips is not required or indispensable therapy so thank you very much for listening to this video and i hope that you must have cleared your doubts regarding the upper uji bleeding there is a recent 2021 guideline uh, from american college of gastroenterology you should read that before going for a neat and neat super specialty exam